Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Chris Flower with Brush Fire Mind. That means it must be 20 hundred on a Sunday night. And what a week it's been. <sighs> we got a few things to talk about this week. And I'm not real happy about any of them. Although I'm abused. I am amused by the uh, situation with our brilliant comrade. So we have the dear leader, the great leader, the dear leader, the brilliant comrade. Of course, I'm talking about the Kim dynasty. Uh, that'd be Kim Sung-un. I'm sorry, Kim Sung-il. Kim, uh, Kim Il-sung. Kim Jong-il. Kim Jong-un. The great leader, the dear leader, and the brilliant comrade. That was Cameron trying to call me just there, so I'm going to try to send him an invite. Because he should have been here already. <laughs> So this week, the brilliant comrade has claimed, and this is convoluted and complicated, so try to stay with me here, that a CIA terror plot, okay, Cameron is not going to join us, a CIA-sponsored terror plot in North Korea has attempted to assassinate uh, Kim Jong-un but keep in mind, this is this is the claim by the propaganda heavy, famous for their ludicrous propaganda, North Korea. The claim is that a terror group sponsored by the CIA for twenty thousand dollars has attempted to assassinate Kim Jong Un with a biochemical nano radiation bomb which will kill over the course of six to 12 months. I can't make this shit up. <laughs> now keep in mind, this is coming from the same government that no shit has been suffering from famine for decades because back in the early 90s, late 80s, faced with hard drought, in order to overcome the problem with drought, Kim Jong-il said, let's just use the seawater and the irrigation systems. They salted their own rice patties. <laughs> We've been sending them tons and tons and tons and tons, literally billions of tons per year of rice. You know, there's that old cliche, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be called a racist for saying something about Asian people eating rice. But uh, the, the, the funny thing about that in North Korea, where the, the Asian North Koreans eat rice, they're eating good old American rice. That's... that's you can't make this shit up. <laughs> so, there's that. And frankly, I don't even think that needs much discussion. That's just something that I got to tell you. I, I, I just needed to put it on your radar. Now, I'm going to go ahead and mention this, and then we're going to discuss this a little bit. Um, apparently, Cameron is just wiped out. So, uh, I was really hoping he'd be here because he's our other expert on health insurance. Uh, but betwixt the pair of us, we could really dig into this. But we're going to talk a little bit about the Republican health care plan. Um, and actually, guys, I'm going to lean on the pair of you a little bit on that to begin with. I want to get your not your ex. I'm sorry. I want to get your layman opinions about Obamacare and what you understand from what the news has given us on Obamacare and the repeal efforts. And then I'll, I'll interject with the, uh, with the professional um, expert opinion a little bit. But we'll get to that in just, in just a second. I also want to say et tu, Perry, because apparently Le Pen has lost the election. Now, we're not overly surprised that France has surrendered again. Um, it's what they do. It's what they do. But here's what does surprise me. 
No, it doesn't, because fake news. Blah, 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 blah. According to CNN, Marcon or Macron is the centrist. Macron is to the left of Marx. The centrist? Please. So let me just clue you guys in a little bit. Le Pen is supposed to be the, the female French Donald Trump. Donald Trump apparently is the uh, is is the playboy of the alt right, blah blah blah, far right, far right. No. No. I mean, even throughout his campaign, it cannot reasonably be argued that Donald Trump is more than slightly right of center. The problem is that we've had these this decade and change of such dogmatically far left nonsense that the Overton window has shifted and the world has forgotten what the left right dichotomy looked like. We don't have a left right dichotomy anymore. We have a left and lefter dichotomy. Our modern Republicans, our modern right wing, smell a lot like flipping uh, Kennedy Democrats. Okay? A lot. It's a bunch of weak sauce horse shit. So this Macron centrist crap So Hitler was a centrist because he was slightly to the right of Marx. I mean, I, I hate to I hate to pull the Hitler card because it's so cliched. But here's the thing about the Hitler card. It gets pulled, Trump is literally Hitler, Orange Hitler, Cheeto Hitler. <sighs> National Socialist Party. So for all you Bernie bots out there, let's just remember, Hitler was a socialist that was democratically elected. I'm going to say that again. Adolf Hitler was a democratically elected socialist. The shit's not complicated. And he also never let a crisis go to waste. No. No, not at all. So, the 7th of May, 2017... And the French have surrendered again. Now, let's dig into the health care bill. Um, guys, talk to me a little bit about how you as laymen, You are informed layman. You don't you guys don't work professionally in the industry of health insurance and healthcare like I do, but you are your news hounds a bit. So go ahead and talk to me a little bit about what you understand about Obamacare versus what the Republicans have done, and then uh, and then I'll fill it in. Uh, I'll go first, and this is going to probably be pretty short and sweet, but my grasp so far is it ain't a whole lot different. I, I do know that a lot of the things the left has been claiming are, are all a part of this, and, you know, we're back just stopping just short of pushing Grandma in the wheelchair off the cliff again. But we're back to half-truths, complete fabrications, things like that, that I really don't know accurately what the breakdown of this does turn into. From what I gathered, there's not a whole lot different really at all. There's some clarification of a few things, but I don't know that I've, I, I've seen like a bullet point list of exactly what the changes are yet. I can't seem to find them. 
Well, this past week for me has been an extraordinarily busy one. And usually where I get two to three hours of news a day uh, compounded, I have been in and out of the house. I have been walking through and seeing things pop up about it. Uh, mostly, honestly, on Fox News, so it wasn't a whole lot of negative, but it did seem like they were trying to pull some positive from it. It seemed a little bit uncomfortable with what had been put out there. So I haven't, I haven't looked down. At, I, I apologize for being less than informed at this at this point in the process. But again, we still, it still hasn't even gone through the Senate yet, and there will be changes made. Um, the stuff that I've seen on the uh, mainstream media has been uh, more the finding the little minutia in it and saying this is going to affect millions of people when it probably will affect, you know, 0.001% of the population. A lot of the stuff that I've seen is, has revolved around uh, pre-existing conditions. And that does concern me. Um, that was one of the things that I really liked about Obamacare Um, but when you're required to have health insurance or pay a fine, then there's never really a lapse in insurance or a tax, I guess is, is what the court ordered it to be called. Um, but apparently with Trump care, as they're calling it, uh, it would be a 30%, um, Increase if you let a lapse in coverage and then sign up for another thing with a pre-existing condition. So it's still allowing it, but it's kind of penalizing you for allowing that gap. Who knows what is going to survive once that thing goes all the way through? I mean, we really don't know. But from what I've seen, I'm not terribly impressed by it. It doesn't seem like the changes are... I don't see the, the, the... economic impact yet and i mean obviously we won't see the economic impact until it impacts the economy um but i i don't see the this big sigh of relief coming from the right and coming from supporters of it uh about how much this is not going to cost taxpayers and so that's where i would ask uh ask chris about that is what what is the what's the effect going to be on uh, on everyday citizens, people who aren't dealing with, uh, with like as far as health care that goes to people who can't really afford it? Is that coming out of our pockets still? Is that being reduced? And how is it going to affect the overall economy? Assuming okay. it goes unscathed through the Senate, which I mean, the three of us I think could all agree that it will not. So we're, we're, we're really talking about something that's that's going to be different by the next couple of Brush Fire Mind episodes. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, just, to, just to get everybody clear on who I am as far as all this goes, um, I actually – I've read the bill, the original Obamacare law, and then – of course, they scrapped it and wrote something else, and that's what they passed. And then I read that. I've read this. And for the last uh, five years, five years? Good Lord, it's been five years. Steve, it's been five flipping years. I've been an insurance agent. No um, wonder you look old. Do what? I said, no wonder you look old. Yeah. Good Lord. Three kids, three kids, a desert war, and I own Bar- I own Obamacare and Georgia.com. And that, kids, is how you create a Viking Santa Claus. That's how you make a Viking Santa Claus. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So, um, licensed insurance agent, I literally own the website Obamacare and Georgia.com. Um, and that has been my uh, that's been my bread and butter my bread and butter for a few years, and it's tapered off. It's it's getting it's gotten it's fallen a lot. Um, much to my surprise, I uh, I underestimated the rate at which the Obamacare plan would self destruct. 
I expected it to last another two years on my business model um, so that I could keep turning a profit off of it before it fell apart. Um, and it, it just hasn't gone that way. It's, it's deteriorating. The prices have increased much faster than I expected. And I was, I mean, I didn't think I could, I could do say more about it when it was first happening. Um, as far as, uh, the pre-existing condition situation, let me ask you this. What did we do about pre-existing conditions before health insurance? Because we've heard all these little anecdotal stories. Oh, if it hadn't been for the ACA, the ACA saved my life. Bullshit. If you believe that, you're an idiot. For decades in this country, it has already been against the law to deny life-saving treatment to a person. That's, that's just, that is. Now, could you have been bankrupted by expensive medical treatment? Sure. Um, but prior to the Affordable Care Act, and please leave it in the comments. Tell me if I'm full of shit. Well, you are, but go on. <laughs> Not about this, mind you. Not about this. Definitely leave it in the comments, but before the, the Affordable Care Act was in place, having a $5,000 deductible was unheard of. You know what we called a $5,000 deductible before the Affordable Care Act? That was considered catastrophic coverage. Now, you could find a five or a $10,000 deductible, sure. But that, that was considered catastrophic coverage. And most of us, like me, personally, as an insurance agent, I, I guarantee you I would push you to something much lower. Um, today, your top-tier plans, your most expensive plans, have $1,000 deductibles. 2012, 2013, you chose to take a $1,000 deductible to lower your to lower your premium to make it to make your premium cheaper to get your premium down into the hundred dollar a month range um if in the state of georgia if you were rocking if you were about 20 if you were in your 20s right single just getting a health insurance plan for yourself um you were looking at like a 500 dollar deductible with uh with pretty good coverage in the 80 to 90 dollar a month range that's not that's not after subsidy because this is before there was a subsidy to be had that's that's what it was you would pay less than a hundred dollars you would have a 500 dollar deductible <coughs> and uh that's that's what a plan was Um, Twitter is a buzz with me right now, apparently. <laughs> so how exactly has the Affordable Care Act improved our situation? It has not improved affordability by no metric. There are one, two, three, four states, five states. There are five states where health insurance is less is, is less expensive today than it was before the Affordable Care Act. Guess what those five states all have in common? Gentlemen, any ideas? Ladies and gentlemen in the peanut gallery, anybody in the live chat want to make a guess? What do you think the five states, there are five states that have had their average premiums reduced since the inception of the Affordable Care Act. What do you think they all had in common? I think I know that answer, but I'll leave that for some other people. No, Sharon, they all had Obamacare. They've had their their bills have gone down since the inception of Obamacare. Those states are Rhode Island, Ohio, New York, New Jersey, 
California. And what do they all have in common? Their health insurance markets were already massively, outrageously uh, overregulated. Minnesota, Lucas, no. Let's see. Minnesota, you have gone from your average cost of health insurance has increased by 25% since the inception of Obamacare. Um, in Georgia, where we are, we're one of the we're one of the worst case scenarios. Uh, we've had a hundred and sixty eight percent increase. And I can vouch just in that sense. In Georgia, we're part of a group plan for a an international company, and we've seen our deductible go from fifteen hundred dollars to forty five hundred. In fact, I think we are the no the only one higher than us is. Uh, Arkansas has had a 171% increase in their premiums. So, yeah, Lucas, uh, prior to prior to Obamacare, you should have been able to purchase, on average, a plan for yourself for about $106 a month without a subsidy. Um, that, and that's a ballpark average. I mean, there are a lot of factors to take in, in, in there. But So prior to the ACH, when there was the question of pre-existing conditions, you would answer the questions. You would answer health questions. Now, here's the thing. People with pre-existing conditions still got health insurance. There were a few ways to do that. Either you carried insurance, you just continued to carry the same insurance that you had from before the condition. So on the one hand, that, mean, that meant that if you had health insurance, um got sick, then it would be difficult to change insurance providers. And that's that's inconvenient, but let's be real, it's not unreasonable. Because at the end of the day, when you, when you start talking about insuring pre-existing conditions, as soon as you say you want to insure pre-existing conditions, you're an idiot or a liar. Insurance only protects against risk. The job of insurance is to protect against risk. You cannot protect against harm that's already been incurred. If you've already suffered damage, when I answer the phone, hey, this is this is your local insurance agent. Yeah, I just rear-ended somebody on the bridge in the rain. I need to buy an insurance policy. Oh, tough. Yes, your rear-ended somebody is a pre-existing condition for which I will deny you coverage. Your house is on fire. That is a pre-existing condition for which I will deny you coverage. I will not sell you a, a fire policy for a house that is currently burning. So as soon as you start talking about covering pre-existing conditions with health insurance, you're an idiot or a liar. It's that simple. Now, as to liars... What has happened here, how often do you hear people talk about the, uh, the ACA and they, and they say the full, the Affordable Care Act and patient, the Affordable Care and Patient Protection Act, and they talk about health care. Admiral Keck, hey, welcome to the show, Admiral Keck. Has anybody ever told you you look kind of like sticks, hex, and hammer in a hard hat? <laughs> Glad to see you. Hope you subscribe. Um, and yes, the meme war. We we are big fans of the meme war here at the Brushfire Mind. Definitely need a piece of that action. Have you, uh, Admiral Keck? Have you seen my meme that I've slung out there that says "Actual Fa" for the anti fa shit burgers? I'm not talking to you for my own health, Keck. Answer, <laughs> respond, brother. Anyway, so the insurance gig. Um, you always hear it called health care. They talk about health care. Health insurance and health care are as related as industries go, are exactly as related as car insurance and mechanical repair work. It's not the same 
business. So they keep talking about health care reform. And what do they give us? They gave us a health insurance law. Mm-hmm. How does an insurance law reform the health care system? The question was not whether or not health insurance was affordable. The question was whether or not health care was affordable. There are a myriad di- pile of different problems associated with that. Oh, Admiral Keck dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm assuming he did. We lost one viewer and he said over and out. Pity. Hey, who, real quick, who else is out there in the audience? I don't have as many commenters in my live chat as I have viewers in my audience. Yeah, y'all need to be here and play. Let me stop running my mouth for just a minute and answer some questions. You guys, what what do you what do you think out there? Out there in America land and hopefully abroad as well. <laughs> yeah, because we, we, we dig the audience interaction. You guys get stuff that we overlook. So if you've got a blank to fill in, do it. Absolutely. Okay, don't everybody jump at once now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. So, I'll, I'll get back into it then. So, the pre-existing conditions thing. Rape is not a pre-existing condition. All these headlines out there that say rape is a pre-existing condition under the new under the new Obamacare or the new Republican health care plan. Uh, their argument is that because. Long-term post-traumatic stress disorder can be considered and, and various kinds of trauma disorders can be considered to be pre-existing conditions that, by extension, rape is also a pre-existing condition. If that is your argument, birth is a pre-existing condition. Having been born suddenly becomes reason enough to deny you coverage. Well, why not? Life is sexually transmitted. That is, yes. That's that's a good one. Yeah, it really I was. was. I, I, was been, I am good. nodding my head and, and raising my eyebrows, and I'm impressed. <laughs> Okay, we got to work on your mise en scene. Get you a little light. Get you a little light in that room. Yeah, I got one light bulb, and then until the sun goes down, I got a little bit. Well, it's pretty much gone down. Yeah, makes me look ominous, but I don't sound ominous. I, you can sound ominous. I can. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, hey, Lucas just subbed to Steve. It's okay, Lucas. He doesn't have subs. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. Um. <laughs> All right, you two. I need a little help here. Well, I have something pulled up on my phone right now that is... It says it's from trumpcare.org, trumpcare, trumpcare.com, and it says Trump Care versus Obamacare, and it has this handy little chart. But the handy little chart doesn't, and, and, and maybe a, a, some anti or never Trumper or whatever swooped in and took that uh, trumpcare.com thing before. Uh, before they could get their hands on it to make it look, you know, make the right look bad. But each one of the things, like for instance, individual mandate. And again, this is, I want to give credit where credit where credit is due. This is trumpcare.com. I'm reading from them. Um, for an example, individual mandate, the individual mandate is gone under Trump care. Continuous coverage is the new requirement. Fail to keep coverage and you'll pay 30% more a month. 
Under Obamacare, the individual mandate requires all eligible citizens to have health insurance, which makes coverage <laughs> affordable nationwide. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, this has clearly been like somebody jumped on trumpcare.com that, to yeah, they, they make it look like it was an official thing. I'm looking at it, too, and you can tell just simply by the wording they're using that this is not oh, absolutely. a fact-finding site. Yeah, and, and the... Uh, I don't. It looks like it looks like a flyer for a elementary fun run, too. It's not very professional looking. But then you go down to uh, uh, like pre existing conditions. The a the they they a it the. Wow. There's only there's only twenty six letters in the alphabet for God's sake. Can <laughs> I can I can I list them out correctly and in order? The a h c a allows the states to decide whether insurance carriers could. Can carry uh, can charge people with pre-existing conditions more for their health care. I do like that we're all about in the Rush Fire Mind. We're all about states running their themselves. So see, I like the sound of that. Um, to the left, that's terrible. They want, I mean, honestly, they want total dictatorship by the federal government. Um, on the other side, people with pre-existing conditions cannot be denied coverage. Conglomeration. Say again. The left is looking for that total unanimized conglomeration. Hive mind. We all march to the beat of the same different drummer. Unanimized. Is that a word? It is now. It seems like it should be. Hey, Grok, like was, Grok was not a word. Yeah, but it, it absolutely is now. <laughs> um. Anyway, so I mean, this is this this age of the internet. It's so easy to find facts that agree with exactly what you want them to be, and are worded exactly how you want them to be worded. And as we know, with this whole rape as a pre-existing condition, this just goes back to everything we saw during the campaign, uh, where any little thing was taken, and it, and and it would make this zigzag of assumptions and illogic to come to this conclusion that was so far away from the original point. And then that, that conclusion that they came to was whatever made up the actual headlines and people only read headlines. So uh, for instance, there's, um, and that's now, how we form our, our opinion. Real, yeah. Real quick. I just want to point out now Kay just mentioned, and we we've already talked about this a little bit, but Kay just mentioned that, there, the headlines on these papers say that rape is going to be a pre-existing condition under the American Health Care Act. I, I just want to I want to make sure that everybody's clear on this. We're not just talking about far left propaganda commie rags like Slate and whatnot. No, this is New York Times, you know, Huffington well, Huffington Post is a is a yeah, New York Times, you're not making your, your point here, Chris, because you you just yeah. mentioned two just because they're bigger doesn't mean they're any less uh, well, okay. biased. Let me rephrase. The, it, it's, yes, they're all far left rags, but MSNBC, CNN, uh, basically everybody except for Fox News and Breitbart is running this headline. Just for a little perspective there. Yeah, I believe it. I totally believe it. I had not seen it until we talked about it before the uh, show started, but. Uh, I wasn't surprised. I mean, that sounds exactly. It, it's like when when uh, when Trump when when he was in there. Gosh, what was this? Less than a week, and it was something about Trump wants horses to die. Do you remember this? No, I, like I Trump. Trump wants to kill. Yeah. Oh, it was. It was. I mean, it came out of nowhere. It was like Trump wants horses to die. Trump hates. He's a horsist. <laughs> He's a he's an equinist, whatever you would call that. He wants horses to die. Does it I, work? I don't even remember where the zigzagging path led to come up with that BS, but it was just ludicrous. Was was he being protested by equinitarians? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was being protested by Mr. Ed, and they just misunderstood what he said. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, this has been this has been going on forever, and and then uh, again, yet again, I saw someone like something from the Huffington Post uh, that was I, apparently saying I did not read the story because I just I don't want to give them the clicks, honestly. 
but it showed a, a, a plaque and uh, like a bronze plaque or something that looked like it. And it had Trump's uh, outline there. And then it had quotes. It looked like it was supposed to be this, this really cool thing in a museum or something or, you know, up in the white house, but then it had these terribly uh, misogynistic quotes um, yeah, I tried to F her and blah, blah, blah. And it was like actual quote, quotes that he had, that, that he had spoken. And, um, and they were presenting like, this is the pre- this is the guy you elected. And once again, at my response to that every single time is I just want to go find, because anyone can find this. It's on the internet for free. The whole thing, the star report. I just want to put a link to the star oh, report. Easy, easy there, free sheep. I haven't shot an Arab in like six years, and I'm trying to reform. <laughs> but these, um, dude, I, I, I can't even sit through that with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> but it continues to be this narrative against uh, uh, Trump, despite the fact that, it, that his look. Just look at the women around him. Look at the powerful women around. Him. Look at how the daughter that he raised is a, is a very powerful, independent, well spoken highly educated woman who has a lot of respect from her father. And this is not, and it's not because she has the Trump blood. I mean, yeah, he's an egotist, but that's not the reason. And, and these people are acting like they didn't just try to elect Bill Clinton back into the white house. And yes, I said, elect Bill Clinton. And the automatic response is always, it was Hillary. It was Hillary. It was Hillary. You know how involved Hillary was as a first lady. You know how involved she was. You know how involved Bill would be. He's an ex-president, for God's sake. That, that's a, yet another good reason he would be that involved. And you would have to be an idiot not to see the Clintons as a single political entity. They are a political machine, the two of them together. Mm-hmm. And you were willing to put a man in there who literally, not only a man in there who literally did the things that Trump said, but you were going to put the woman in there, even if you're trying to argue on the on the Hillary side that Bill doesn't matter. OK, fine. You're going to put the woman who mocked, made fun of and allegedly threatened the women who came forward against her husband. That, that was one thing I couldn't wrap my head around and nobody would respond to through that. No, that's when they would magically disappear. Yeah. Yep. The wonderful the wonderful <laughs> part about the Internet, you can be a really brave soul and then you can just magically disappear. Um, Free says even 4chan is weak in France. <laughs> Woo, you win the chat feed tonight, brother. Damn, son. <laughs> Woo. Oh, guys. Okay, we, I, I got to pull us back. We're 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 treading down the uh, old beat on Hillary thing, and frankly, the bitch is dead. Long live the king. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'd I'd love to see her I'd love to see her ass in jail. Um you guys ought to go back and watch my video the leak you left on why it's really on the, the White House leaks, but I talk about the email thing in that and point out some pretty significant stuff. But I promised Cherry that I would get back to the pre existing conditions question. Okay, so before Obamacare, if you had a pre existing condition there was a time of like statute of limitations. Um, most of those statute of limitations type of things were one, three, or five years. Um, even most cancers, if you had, if if your cancer treatment, if you're, if you had completed your cancer treatment five years ago, you would be treated essentially as if you didn't have a pre-existing condition. Um, so this idea that having a pre-existing condition is just a death sentence is it's a lie. It's been a carefully constructed lie. Oh, uh, and even then, even then what would be done is you would have normally you would, you would be able to buy a policy and your pre-existing condition would be excluded for a period. And that period would be part of the uh, part of the negotiation process. It might be three months, six months, a year, usually not longer than a year. And so, for one year, you would have to pay for your own treatment. No, uh, free sheep. Being French is not a pre-existing condition. It's uh, it's a handicap. 
Oh. Let me interject for a second here, Chris, because now I don't know, but we took the advice, so I don't know what the other side of this looks like. But my ex-wife had breast cancer. Uh, this is 10 years ago. Uh, through, went through surgery and chemotherapy and, and all of that, the whole reconstruction, all of the whole, the whole thing. And at every single step from the, from the, the doctor who gave her the diagnosis to her surgeon, to her oncologist, uh, to her reconstruction surgeon, every single one of them advised us, begged us even, do not have a lapse in coverage. If, you're, if you lose your job and lose your health care, uh, your insurance, your health insurance, then you will never be able to get it again, or at least at a decent price. Now, I can't say what that looks like because we didn't let it happen. You understand? So I don't know what the other side of that is, but I just know that these people in the healthcare industry were telling us not for the love of God, don't let it drop. Hang on. I, I can't tell you how excited I am to have uh, to have Mr. President Donald J. Trump in the audience now. Uh, I I, I kind of doubt that you're actually the El Presidente. But, hey, if you are, no shit. I was in the press pool last, last weekend when Donald Trump spoke in, in Atlanta, and damn, it was a good show. So uh, thanks for thanks for faking it, brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> I don't, Cage. You don't have the uh, live chat on your iPad, do you? I do not. Okay, we, we we have somebody in the in the live chat here whose name is Donald J. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure that's the that's the uh, the Cheeto Nazi. I'm sure that's him. <laughs> anyway, did you? So, did were you tracking on what I was saying about that? The warnings that we got every step of the way, but I don't know what would have actually happened. <laughs> well, I'm loving this, you guys. Keep I don't up. have the well, chat. This is real good. <sighs> I really hate not having this chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> can you teach me how to computer, Chris? I can teach you how to computer. Good, because I'm wondering if I can pull this up on my phone. I feel like the foreign exchange student, and they just heard a great joke by all the American kids. <laughs> yeah, that's a, don't don't mean to have the dead air, folks, but we're getting a little bit more. Uh... Yeah, we're, on the we're chat getting a little interactive with the chat over here. <laughs> right, we're actually, we actually have a, a pretty big audience tonight. <laughs> I'm, loving I'm loving every second of it, but we're getting a little bit more. Uh... <laughs> that was good. <laughs> uh, so anybody not following us through the chat, it's been revealed that, that, that Donald J. Trump is joining us from what appears to be the presidential restroom. Nice. Yeah, he's hiding for the Secret Service on the shitter. <laughs> <laughs> you can't oh, hide there. You distract me. David, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I feel so derailed. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. I can't pull it up. I if, your can't pull it up. if your ex-wife had lost her coverage, it would have been more expensive to replace it. That is correct. But not impossible. They, they acted like it was impossible. No, that's, that's not true. Um, and the way it would have worked then, already having... <laughs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> oh. Damn it, man. Will you tell no. me how to pull this off? No. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Donald J. Dump? Yeah. <laughs> so, wait. prior to Obamacare, you, you got a job. You got coverage through your job. You lose your job. You go on COBRA. Cobra is coverage. Yep. Then it's you go and apply for new coverage while you're still on Cobra. Cobra is coverage. No lapse. Good to go. Um, 
Now, if you were to opt out, if you were to skip the Cobra and just go straight to the next one, then you will you would find that probably your condition would not be covered for six months to a year. Um, which is scary with something like breast cancer, but not it's not a death sentence. It's not. Your worst case scenario in there is that it's an expensive sentence. Now, a potentially very expensive sentence. Let's let's not let's not kid ourselves. Um, my experiences with with breast cancer, with people I know and love, and that includes uh, that includes the woman we were just talking about. Um, that that is a very very expensive treatment. There mm-hmm. there is. There is not a treatment for that, which is not essentially like buying another house. Absolutely. And most of that treatment is incurred within a one-year time span. So a lapse in coverage there would be devastating. But that's not how the pre-existing conditions work. Now, under the new plan... Oh, no, Sharon... Cobra plans can cost much more than $1,000 a month now. Prior to Obamacare, closer to seven or $800 a month. But now, you're looking at much higher than $1,000 a month. Uh, if, if you get your Cobra plan, if your family Cobra plan for $1,000 a month, you won the damn lottery. Um, so, the Republican repeal plan. Jerry, when was your Cobra 1200? And was it just for you or was it for the family? Uh, yeah, see, in two, 2008 was a long time ago. <laughs> Things have gotten bad since then. Um, so under the, under the replace plan, um, it's talking about the states being allowed to decide whether or not insurance companies can charge an increased premium based on pre-existing conditions. What nobody's talking about is the risk pool. So here's, this is the position that I've taken on pre-existing conditions since before Obamacare was implemented. Um, not before it was passed. I wasn't an insurance agent yet when it, when it passed. I became an insurance agent shortly after it passed and bought Obamacare and Georgia.com shortly after that. But in property and casualty insurance, there are things called, and guys, I love, love, love that you're hanging out. I, I appreciate the shit out of you guys being here. This is one of the biggest audiences we've had. That's yep. awesome. If I start to bore you, tell me, but I'm going to hit you with some real, with some real shit real quick. In property and casualty insurance, we're talking homeowners insurance. We're talking business insurance. We're talking, uh, property risk insurance, we're talking general liability insurance. There are things called adverse risks. Pre-existing conditions in health insurance are adverse risks. If you're a smoker and you're talking to a life insurance agent, you're an adverse risk. There's a higher chance of you having a problem than if you weren't a smoker or whatever it is you do. So there are certain kinds of businesses that are adverse risks. One of them that I've that I've dealt with uh, writing insurance plans for are home health care and senior amb- ambulatory services. So in home in the home health care business, you're sending you're sending a nurse, you're sending an RN, you're sending a phlebotomist, you are sending people to homes, to the homes primarily of seniors, of infirmed elderly. Now they do, yeah. The the home health care guys they do like work with comp. You've been laid up, you're hurt on the job, you're laid up at home. They send a nurse, blah blah blah. By and large, what they work with are the infirmed elderly. The thing about the infirmed elderly is that they're brittle, they're sick. There's a lot of room for stuff to go wrong. And the turnover rate in the industry is gigantic. So there's also a lot of a lot of room for bad actors to get involved. 
insurance companies do not want to cover the liability insurance which protects the company which protects the home health care company from lawsuits filed against their employees or themselves if somebody suffers an injury as a result of the home health care service insurance companies don't want to take on that risk because it's a hard it's a hard case to win when a, when a claim like that is filed it's a very expensive payout and there's an unusually high probability of those claims being filed Medicare is a whole nother trick, Cherry. I can tell you, I could. <laughs> you ought to call me on the phone and we can talk about Medicare. Medicare, that scam. Medicare is state sponsored insurance for which you still have to pay a premium out of pocket. And then it covers so little that if you're not smart enough to buy a supplemental plan, which is a private insurance policy that, play, that pays the difference, you are staring down the barrel of financial ruin in your old age that's the truth medicare is a damn scam um so the way we cover the adverse risks like that this is for flood stuff all, all kind of stuff all kind of crazy risks skydivers shit like that we have risk pools the risk pool it's where we send everybody that nobody wants to cover insurance for. And then all the insurance companies have to get together and cover those risks. So if you are uh, an adverse risk that ends up in a risk pool, you don't get to choose which insurance company covers you. But the insurance companies don't get to deny you either. So the state matches you up with an insurance company that is being voluntold to take care of you. Pennsylvania has an auto insurance law that's called assigned risk that works very much the same way. You get given to an insurance company, they have to cover you, but they get to dictate how much they're going to charge you for it. Yes. Um, most of the risk pools, uh, there is there is some grading. They're not, they, they get to dictate how much they charge you for it, but it's, I'll, I'll say in air quotes, within reason. Um. <laughs> excuse me because it's not reasonable to say that a person in that situation i mean if you've had if you've had nine duis and the state forces somebody to cover your health to cover your car insurance you should probably pay a pretty penny for it sorry don't get duis um perverse incentives onto them what results do you expect holy shit free sheep you're using some big words I hope I hope you keep coming back to the show. You're a sharp cookie. Wow, Cherry, we uh, you you need to find me on Facebook or something, and or just go to ObamacareGeorgia.com and give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not in Georgia, I can give you some advice. That's it'll that's where it has to end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Donald, you're killing me, brother. You're killing me. But I love you, baby. I love you. <laughs> no, please don't wipe with it. You're yeah, fucking yeah, all up. You may need that later. <laughs> oh. So anyway, under the uh, under the new Republican plan, the idea is that pre-existing conditions in states that choose to allow them to be discriminated against, which they should, uh, will have a risk pool type of situation. Now, this is already happening in, in Texas. They've already been doing this, and it's been working wonderfully. But One thing that was brought up, there was a discussion started by some friends on a, a personal page um, online that... Uh, was trying to address how things are supposed to be taken care of. Say, say the end game is going to be, and there is no avoiding a single payer health insurance. How do we pay for that? Because we already know if we were to take on all the costs of medical care for people in the country, 
that there's no way we can do it. We, we've known for years that you can tax what the upper 30% at a hundred percent of everything they make. And it doesn't even run the government for 12 months. So when you can't tax the com- the country enough to cover the medical bills, what do you do? And I was actually asking, a leftist actually attacked me because of my gun nut uh, ways and, and things from uh, uh, ancient history posts that somehow she happened into, um, claiming that I, being a libertarian, I'm, I'm interested in just letting people die rather than making sure everyone's covered. I had asked her, okay, well, what are you willing to cut from that the government pays for now to help pay for this healthcare stuff? I couldn't get a straight answer. Anybody else experienced something like that? I mean, not only could, could I not get a straight answer, I could not get her to approach that anything should be cut to get the government to pay for the health care. Because she believes in free money. Uh, evidently. evidently. As, as a, so much of the left does. They, they believe free money is a thing. And it just, that's the whole, the whole idea of it. And it became, it came down to the argument about healthcare being a right. And we've discussed that on this program several times that how do you have a right to the services of someone else? How do you force people to get a PhD and practice it? But that that's where it's headed. That's what they think they're going to be able to do with this. Right is a word that is abused and abused and abused yep. on a daily basis. Well, gentlemen, it is already four minutes to nine. Holy moly. Is it, is it White Hats Matter time? Well, I'm thinking if we keep getting more and more people taking part in this like we're asking, we may have to lengthen the show. Uh, uh, are you guys cool to hang out if we end up having to do that? So I am. let me just throw this out there. If we, if we were to do that, what I think we would do – is we would uh, we would do the regular show all the way up until nine o'clock, and then maybe do a like a just hang out afterwards, overtime. Do, do some Q and A and stuff after the fact. It yeah. it mean a little less interaction real time, so we can get the show in. But uh, you guys are our regular viewers, so that we're, and I'm watching your scroll go by. What do y'all think about doing that? Are you willing to uh, to stick around and have a conversation after if we change the format up? I mean, we don't have to wait on all the answers. I just want to throw the question out there. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and do this. Oh, let's let's. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time again. White hats matter. Heartwarming stories of death and destruction. And I believe we got us a hashtag DRT this week, boys. Who's taking over? Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. So, um, j- just so everyone is aware, our, our buddy Cade um, came up with a couple for us this week, and we had one that we picked that was out of Arlington, Texas. And you have to excuse me; I'm kind of between notes and a web page for this one, so bear with me. So, what we have is evidently at some point in an evening on a Wednesday night, a patron walks into a bar in Arlington, Texas, yelling uh, fairly incoherently, and some of the partial quotes we got were. Oh, who worked for the cartel? And F, Mexicans, you deserve to die. That's a direct quote from the article we were reading, which was shared by our local NBC affiliate, 11 Alive. Um, <laughs> from what it says, another patron approached to calm this fella down. That fellow pulled a gun and shot the dude that was trying to calm him down. And uh, that did eventually end up in, in the, the good Samaritan kind of fellow who was coming up. He did die. Um, Another concealed carrier in this bar pulled a weapon, returned fire, and killed the shooter on the spot, which is our hashtag DRT. DRT! DRT! (laughs) I love love to make him smile. It warms my heart. So um, it goes on in in the story. I I ran out of note paper, so I had to cheat. But – after the fact, they, they had reported that the restaurant has what the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission calls a blue sign, which they actually post signs indicating that concealed carry hand, handgun, concealed handgun license carriers can indeed carry concealed weapons in their establishment. So they are allowed to put up a weapons welcome sign in Texas on their bars. Georgia's not required to do anything like that, but I, I'd, I'd sure love to see some pop up if anyone feels like making it. 
Um, the sheriff, or, uh, you know, one of the police lieutenants said that the, the man's actions likely saved other lives because the perpetrator had a second loaded handgun in his pocket as well as two knives. And the second handgun had its serial number scratched off, which probably indicated it was a stolen weapon. Um, goes on for some other things. It, it, they really don't know the motivations, things behind it. However, you don't have to know. All you have to know is there are people in danger and it needs to stop. And that fella did, and, and uh, we, we give him a tip of the hat for that one. So, so a legal, legal carrier. carrier. Whoa. Oh, yeah. What just what happened? happened? Yep. The, a, why, a, am I, why, why am I echoing? echoing? Not entirely sure. You're not to us, so you may have a little lag going on. Oh, good. Okay. okay. So I just have to oh, no, undistract myself. Okay. So a legal gun, a le let's, let's make this very clear That's because the, 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 the killer here, the murderer here had a second gun with a scratched off serial number. So it has not been confirmed whether the gun that he used to kill. And by the way, rest in peace, the 37 years old, mm -hmm. the manager there, Cesar Perez, who came forward to, to try to calm him down, try to, do what he did. It's terrible. It's a terrible tragedy. Apparently very beloved uh, part of, of, of the community there. Um, so we wish his family the best, but this, uh, this is a legal carrier who stepped in and prevented possibly prevented a further shooting from someone who was most likely illegally carrying weapons. But we see, we don't know for a fact whether the one he used to kill Mr. Perez was legally obtained or not. Yeah, it, it wasn't specific about anything along those lines. Um, but again, yeah. no, no matter what you do, no matter what regulations you put out there, someone is going to get a hold of the weapon they want to get a hold of. And if they go in there, oftentimes, like when, when you have like Dylan Roof or any of these people who come in and do mass shootings, there now his was his was something that they had this loophole in the in the law that it took too long to get his records from one state to another, so they just went ahead and gave him one. Uh, gave him a license. But regardless of that, these people who do mass shootings, and this is a first time offender type of thing, like almost every time. So yep. there is nothing for the, for the, the government, the local government or the, the person who is selling the guns to go on to tell the, to, to deny these people anything. Make, make no mistake. Any criminal is already breaking laws or they wouldn't be called criminals. Gun laws. Right stop people who are already breaking other laws from breaking more laws. It, it's some of the stupidest logic I've ever heard in my life. The idea they, of putting a sign on the front of a building to it's at a gun safe zone. Sure. Criminal's going to lay his gun down at the door, come in and talk out his problems. I'll bet you. Right. Right. And they're going to see that and be like, Oh, you know, like the woman on the YouTube video, not today. <laughs> like it's just not going to happen. But I, I was telling Steve Real before quick. the show, go ahead. A free sheet brings up a good point. Actually. He says the best thing about guns is that you don't have to have one to deter criminals in your community. The criminals just got to believe you have guns. It's Case a fair point. point. Case in point, Kennesaw, Georgia has one of the lowest crime rates, most specifically home burglary and break-in rates in the country. And, in the, and that is because in the city of Kennesaw, Georgia, it is a city ordinance that in order to purchase and own a home, you must first prove that you own a handgun, not a rifle, not a shotgun. You must own at least one. No shit. I can put it in my belt and protect my family from a break in handgun. I'd have to check that, that statute. Uh, did you really just show your piece? Yeah, we practice what we preach on this channel, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I've got, I've just got a TV remote handy. Um, hey, you, but this, you throw it at thirteen hundred feet per second. Right, yeah, uh, that's possible. So this this brings up a, a good, uh, and I'll get back to what I was going to say about the the comment. But Steve has often brought up the 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 Wild West, quote unquote Wild West, as the example that the left tries to use all the time. Well, we don't want to live in the Wild West where everybody's packing and they're all going to, and there's just lawlessness and that's not how it operated then no they, what what you're going by are spaghetti westerns that the that your parents grew up with that were really big 
and, and um, yeah, folks, this ain't Hollywood. Like every other movie, like like just just like you would think in an alien invasion, if you base it on everything in Hollywood, an alien invasion is all obviously going to play out that they're here to conquer Earth. That's the same kind of thinking. Like if 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 NASA ever made contact or or any of these other organizations ever made contact with aliens, surely. They'd come shooting with lasers. They would look disgusting to us, and they would kill us all. That's the, that's the kind of logic you're using with the Wild West. Just because these interesting stories involved people who had balls enough to go into these towns where everyone was carrying and try to rob a bank or – To exert force in some way. Right, but right. Let's bring that a little more up-to-date, Cade, just, just to show that example with the idea that um, uh, all those guns are going to get people shot like it was in the Wild West – a few years ago, House Bill 60 in Georgia passed, and I, I don't, I didn't track all the numbers the whole way through. It's a failing of mine. I, I don't have a head for all the statutes. But we passed a bill that was known colloquially nationwide as the Guns Everywhere Bill. And they were talking about folks were going to die because we were going to let people carry guns in bars, and there's nothing in the statute that would keep them from drinking while they're carrying their guns. And we were going to let... Uh, guns into public parks, which was already pretty much legal according to our state constitution, and and several other things that, that this was just going to end in an absolute meltdown. Well, obviously, if there was anything to do with that, it would have been the first thing reported on, and it would have been reported on for at great length for weeks on end about how bad <laughs> this bill was. Because it served the narrative. Exactly. And but there was nothing to serve the narrative. Nothing in Georgia has changed out of that law except the crime rates have dropped a little bit. Right, and so they went. Just, they just went dead silent. Correlation does not mean causation. Don't get me wrong. It it could be something else dropping them, but that's really the only thing that has changed. But to make that to make to drive the point that you have made several times home, the the Wild West was not the Wild West. This is it. It wasn't the the all this this free for all with everyone shooting each other like you see in the movies. Those are movies. Even the ones based on true stories, stories always have some sort of a clash between good and evil. That's what a story is for the most part. That's what you're going to see. It's not representative of how everything actually played out. Right. But um, speaking of the usual, one of the comments that I read on that, that uh, particular piece, by the way, kudos to 11 alive, who is traditionally just like their, their uh, national affiliation, NBC, very liberal. Yes, uh, very well, leftist. And in, I mean, the headline for this story, this White Hats mat Matter story that Steve has has given us, the no, headline was even that that he very well could have prevented uh, a mass shooting. So kudos to them for actually, like maybe it was the one conservative on staff. I don't know, but anyway, uh, one of the comments that I read, uh, it was a lot of backpedal. There was, as predicted, there was a lot of backpedaling from the left in the in the comments. Those brave enough to actually comment, which were not that many, right? And one of them said, "Well, we understand that this kind of stuff happens, that it does play out the way that conservatives, you know, want it to play out sometimes, but it's not the norm." And I and I'm thinking, okay, well, what what is the norm then? Of course, they didn't explain what is the norm. Because the norm to me, anytime I hear about some shooting happen, the norm is people in the double digits are dying in the four minutes average it takes the police to get there. <laughs> and then it ends with a clash between law enforcement or, or maybe the, the shooter kills themselves before it gets worse. That's the norm. I mean, what are they, what, what are they talking about? And this is also coming from a group who – cherry picks the hell out of everything to serve their narrative. They, they take the one in a million chance and try to use that. See, 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 this happens. Look, look. Right. Um, but then, but then they're like, Oh, it, it's just how people on the right are just as bad about it. But what is the norm? I mean, can, can so, you answer that? You, you, you can't ever answer a norm. You can't ever go by average because, you know, average for a while was, you know, the, the average nuclear family has 3.2 children. Who, who has a quarter of a kid? Uh, right. It doesn't exist. The, the average does not exist. It is simply a construct. I have six children that are packaged as three. That <laughs> is true. Well, guys, it's 10 minutes after nine. I've got administrative shit to take care of and TV to watch with my pretty wife. So 
Thank you all so much for watching the show tonight. I hope to see all of you next week. Yeah, so, especially Tom, let me step on you for just a second. Chris, let me step on you for just a second because yeah, all you viewers who have stuck around, you guys set a new record for us tonight. We, we, you're the people. We're awesome. Here. We love this. Thank you very much for being here. I want to be a part of it. <laughs> I'll try to figure out how to computer before next week. And hey, hit us up on the Patreon page, patreon.com slash brushfiremind, or leave us a tip on Vidme or on uh, minds.com and help us build this thing. Help us get it bigger. We'll uh, keep an eye out for the bluffs. Those are coming out more. Those are going to be coming out more and more frequently now that things are changing. And again, love you guys. And remember, until next week, if you build a man a fire, you'll keep him warm for the evening. But if you set a man on fire, he'll be warm for the rest of his life. Good night. <laughs>